Hey everyone, Madrybrad here. Pokemon Fire Red with only one app soul was a fast run. Let's follow that up with something special. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Black 2 with a team of only Christmas Pokemon? So, right off the bat, this is my first time ever playing Black 2. Like, ever. As I'm writing this, I haven't actually played it yet. By my vague understanding, it's mostly the same map as Black, but the path you take isn't always the same. This might be a little bit less of a challenge, and more of me taking you with me on my journey through my first time playing Black 2. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I've literally never played the game, so this isn't exactly an educated guess, but I'd assume that this is possible. There are some decent Christmassy Pokémon. A red squiggly's telling me that Christmassy isn't a word right now, and I think it's lying to be quite honest. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use... Uh, <laughs> Christmassy themed Pokémon? Yeah, that's kind of vague, isn't it? Look, it's a Christmas special, let's just have some fun. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. How cool is it that the game actually started in winter for this run? I didn't set that up, I actually don't know how, so that's lucky. Unless it's based on the system clock on my computer, because you know, it's December. If December is always winter on the system clock in this game, then I guess it wasn't lucky at all. So, the game starts with us meeting our rival for this game and finding Bianca. This is all new to me, but probably not new to most of you, so I'm not totally sure how much of the non-battle stuff I should cover, or if I should cover the plot at all, honestly. I think I'll let you know the series of events, but I won't go into explaining the whole plot, or this video will never come out on time. Plus, I'll probably get it wrong anyway, and then everyone will get mad at me in the comments. Who am I kidding? I could get it right and I'd still get angry comments. <laughs> Alright, I found the Pokemon Lab. I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Tepig with Delibird so that we can get the most Christmassy Pokemon of all. I picked to replace Tepig so that we could get our hands on Simisage. It'll make sense later. I name him Santa's Delibird. It's a dumb reference to an old creepypasta form I used to run that had lots of Pokemon creepypasta on it. I'm sure you've heard me and What a Geek joke about it in, like, half of our Pokemon Let's Plays. Looks like we've got more speed and less defense, and we've only got present until we can get some TMs. Considering I don't know where any of them are, I'm not really looking forward to using this guy. Present is a pretty trash move, sometimes it deals decent damage, and sometimes it heals your opponent. We had our customary starting the game rival fight that I don't normally go over, but we actually almost fainted, because Present sucks. So we're on the first round of the game, Present does about as well as you'd expect here, so not well at all. Sometimes it hurts them a lot, sometimes it hurts them a little, and sometimes it heals them. There's no cool strategy that I know of to make this move awesome, it's just kind of terrible. We need some decent luck to get through any early game fight. On my way out of the route, I met up with Alder. I think this guy is the Pokemon champion from Black, but I've never actually fought him since I'm pretty sure he's post-game in that. I figure he's probably the final boss of this one, but I guess we'll find out. So I keep following the path to the ranch just to get jumped by our rival. Well, I'm not healed and have two power points left from the route before, so we lose. Man, it's been a while since I got caught off guard before a boss fight in a Pokemon game. I probably would have lost without a few more levels anyway. Full disclosure, I'm going to be using Speed Up in the emulator when grinding. I know you guys tell me to use it all of the time anyway, so I probably don't even need to bring this up. But it's a challenge in a whole new game, and I've got to get this recorded, edited, and uploaded before Christmas, so time is of the essence. After coming back, we won pretty quickly thanks to a crit. Can't wait to get a new Pokémon so that we can stop using present. Anyway, some people want us to go into the woods to find their dog, so we did and bumped into a member of Team Plasma trying to steal it. After showing up, the grunt threw frustration at us in frustration. The move kinda sucks. <laughs> Okay, no, the move really sucks, but TMs are infinite use in this game, and this move is a move, so we learn it. <laughs> I decided to go straight to the first gym, and it looks like it's Charon, one of the rivals from the first game. I feel like I've heard that he becomes a gym leader in this game, that's pretty cool. What wasn't cool was losing to him fast because frustration sucks. This move actually does less damage the more our Pokémon likes us, so it's only getting weaker as we grind more. 
I think I'll have to rely on present for this. The first time I tried, it started great with Patrat going down much faster, but of course it totally fails on Lillipop. I tried a bunch more times, but it just kept happening. Present is just useless. If there's a better TM that he can use early in the game, I wouldn't know. So it's back to the grind. The grind isn't that bad since his early game, but right here is exactly what slows you down in Gen 5 runs. You see, in Gen 5, when you fight Pokémon that are a higher level than you, you get extra experience points. That's pretty cool, but when you fight a Pokémon that's a lower level than you, you actually get less experience points. That means that grinding doesn't just get slower because you need more experience as you level up, but because you're given less experience as well. It's kind of a cool mechanic for if you're playing Pokémon normally, but I'm not. And it makes Gen 5 challenges take a lot longer to do, just in case you're wondering why I don't do them very often. What you're watching right now is me using fast forward in-game and speeding up the footage in editing. Would you look at how slow that is? I am dying for a new move. Think about it this way, when I'm grinding in Viridian Forest for the first gym in Gen 1 or Gen 3 in Kanto, I'm at least getting like 50 experience when I beat up a Metapod. Right here I'm getting 9 experience on some of these Pokémon. That's 5 times less for fighting something that can actually hurt me. Alright, it literally took me over a dozen attempts at level 15, but we finally got around where our present luck was good enough to take them down, and even then it was only because Charon used workup way too much. As we went outside, Bianca showed up and gave us the TM for return. Thank god we get a real move, a great one at that. Our stats are still kinda bad, but at least we have a solid move. So, upon getting to the next city, we overhear what looks to be the captain of a boat in uniform telling their young daughter that they're going to the studio to become a big star, as their daughter explains in return that she has responsibilities to go back to. Her mom, dad, not sure, walks off and she just starts having a tantrum, then says she's going to the gym. It's alright, I used to live in Hamilton, I've seen weirder. So I go to find the gym and it's looking pretty crazy from the outside. Poison? That's my favorite type. As I go down, it's an underground rock club. It's actually kind of awesome. The music here is really fun. I have no idea if I'll be able to find the song for editing, but I guess, who knows? My, <laughs> my whole Gen 5 soundtrack has all the Japanese names for the routes and cities, so I have no idea what I'm inserting half the time in Gen 5 runs. Even just the regular trainers in here beat us some of the time, though. They like to disable return, and even though it's our best move, we're far from maxed out on friendship, so it's not doing much in the first place. I genuinely don't think we're ready for the gym yet. Hey, at least south of town is a much better place to grind. Seriously, the route before this had level 3 Pokémon. It's crazy how fast this ramped up. Once we actually get to the gym fight, it doesn't go great. We took out coughing pretty easily, but we lost almost half of our health in the process. As we attacked Whirlipede, we ended up getting poisoned, making her Venishock easily finish us off. It does extra damage when we're poisoned. Honestly, I can't think of anything we can do but grind. At level 22, I tried the fight seven more times and got this amazing run where we finally didn't get poisoned by Poison Point, just to end up leaving Whirlipede with a sliver as we went down. Okay, one more level it is I guess. Another 5 tries at level 23, and we finally get another lucky one where we don't get crit or poisoned, letting us finally win this fight. I cannot wait until we can finally catch a Christmassy Pokémon. <laughs> so after that, we have to go to the Pokéstar Studios. As we arrive, we bump into the owner talking to someone about us. Kinda creepy. Apparently they think that I could be a big star just because I beat the second gym leader. Anyway, they take us in, and it seems to be some kind of movie theater. It's actually pretty cool. They have us watch a fight that seems to be between the Ice Gym Leader from Black and... the Captain, I think? I thought it was kind of fun, but as the show went on, the audience went from happy, to sleepy, to confused, to mostly leaving during the show. As we left the screening room, the Captain had a monologue about balancing being a star and a captain like his daughter balances being a gym leader and having a band. 
Not really the same thing, but all right, whatever floats your boat, literally, we need to get to the mainland already. Next, they brought us to the film studio, that's one door over. I tried to leave because the captain said they'd be at the boat, but they're forcing me to be in a movie. I haven't signed anything, so I don't think this is legal. I'm pretty sure I'm 10, and I haven't heard one guy talk about paying me yet. I have a Christmas run to do. I don't have time for your movies. Unless it's a Christmas movie, that's fine then. They asked me if I want to use my Pokemon or rental Pokemon in the movie. I said I want to use mine, and he said, sorry, use a rental one. Why do you give me a choice then, man? So we get on the set, and it's just a giant green screen. I feel like I'm on the set of the Star Wars prequels, and that's not a good thing. Well, in fairness, that was one big blue screen, and that wouldn't work here since they gave us a gross, not Christmassy Riolu to use. I plugged my nose, got the shoot over with, and then sprinted out of that place as fast as I could. And here I thought we were shooting a Christmas movie. As I got to the dock, I bumped into our rival and the gym leader fighting with some plasma goons. The Pokemon battle was easy as we one-shot him, but afterwards they did what all Team Whatever members should do after losing a fight to a 10-year-old, and they just pushed us aside to get away. The gym leader thanked us and taught us how to cut someone. Again, I lived in Hamilton, I'm good. So we run all the way back to Route 20 to one-shot one Grunt's Pokemon. She announces that running this way was stupid and that she should just get on a boat. She runs off and our rival shows up, talks about how we need to find somebody who knows something about boats, and that there should be a place to board boats at the port. Yeah, man. That's what a port is. I bet you could get on an airplane at an airport too, but we'll tell him about that some other time. It'll blow his mind. I don't think he can handle it right now. Too much excitement for one day. So I go back to the port, and we ran into the captain, having an existential crisis again. But it ends with him wanting to captain the ship, so that's great. Thanks to that, we are finally sailing to Castilia City. And that's awesome, because it means we can finally get some new Pokémon soon. As soon as I enter the city, a clown gives me a bike and says I can ride to a bunch of places and do things. Optionally. So I take that bike and ride far away from him in his quests, because we have Pokémon to catch. Right away, I head to the north end of town to catch Darumaka. We name him Heat Miser, after the character from the Christmas classic, The Year Without Santa Claus. My personal Christmas classic knowledge is actually really weak, so you can thank researcher Leela for the great suggestions. Looks like we've got less speed and extra defense. I was hoping for more attacks since this thing can be a real monster once his attack gets high, but it should be good either way. I don't really like the ability Hustle since we'll miss more, but we get a different ability when we evolve anyway, so it's a temporary problem. Anyway, I went to go to the bug gym, but the bug gym leader wasn't there. Instead, it was White's version of the dragon gym leader, Iris, and she led us up to the sewers on the off chance that Plasma are hiding there. Gee, thanks lady. Thanks for telling me to go to the sewer. Oh, I see you're not following me. Anyway, we ended up using this place to grind up Heat Miser a little bit, since this is a double battle place anyway, so our rival can kind of carry us. Much like in Platinum, we get healed after every wild double battle, so it's super easy to grind here, we never have to run back to get power points or health. While I was down here I found some leftovers, that's an amazing item to find so early in the game. Is this the earliest the leftovers can be found in any Pokemon game? Because I'm not complaining. I asked my friend Leela about this, and she said that the water levels here are different in different seasons, so maybe I can only get here in winter or something. Anyway, after fighting some more one-shot grunts, we finally found the bug gym leader just hanging out in the sewers like you do. Well, Heat Miser leveled up a little bit, so let's go get another badge. The bug gym starts with Swadloon, a bug and grass type. That means he's double weak to fire, so one fire punch did the job. Dwebble was second, and his rock-type Smackdown was strong against us, but we still overpowered him in two hits. Last was Levani, another Pokémon who's super weak to fire. He crit cut, but we held on and one-shot him with Fire Punch. This is so much better than Delibird already. So, on my way out of town to the north, I run into this weirdo named Colrus who's fiddling with a tablet and controlling Pokémon to make him break roadblocks. Then he goes on some rant about how Plasma thought Pokémon should be free from humans, but that he believes Pokémon are strongest when they're working with humans. Yeah, you just know this creepy tech dude is gonna end up being the villain. Or at least a villain. Anyway, he fights us. It started rough with us getting paralyzed right away, but he really wasn't doing much. He seems to favor steel types, so I'm happy that I got Heat Miser before this dude showed up. As I entered the next area, a businessman greeted us. 
He says this is Join Avenue. He owns it, and that he's looking for someone to manage this place. He then asks us to manage it, because we were the first ones to show up, I guess, and he wouldn't take no for an answer no matter how many times I said it, so eventually I said yes. Oh man, I have to pick a favorite phrase? Yeah, sure. Twitter. What do I say when I'm impressed? Man, I don't know. Don't forget to like. What's my job title? Subscribe? Ring the bell? Oh my god, they're done talking. I'm out of here. I need to get to the next gym. So I get to the next gym, and the guy there says that the gym leader isn't here. She's at the old gym riding the coaster. You know, instead of being at work. Why do I have to hunt down everyone before they'll do their job? Well, when I got to the end of the coaster place, someone just tells me that she just left to go back to the current gym. There was literally no point to this other than to get me to fight two more trainers and ride some coasters. Maybe the gym puzzle is a test of patience rather than skill. First is Emolga, and I'm already worried. Right away I go for Fire Punch, but they Volt Switched, so we took damage, and Flaffy ended up taking the hit, paralyzing us from static. Well, that does suck, but it means that as she potioned back up, our facade is now much stronger, so we one-shot her in return. Emolga came back out and Volt Switched again, letting Zeb Stryka take the second facade for another one-shot. Back out to Emolga, and the third Volt Switch finished us off. All that's left is Santa's Delibird, who is a flying type in the Electric Gym, so he didn't even last a hit. Failing that fight, we went up north to the forest and ran around for ages finding patches of rustling grass. There's a 10% chance we find what we need here. It actually took so long that all of the other rustling grass Pokémon I was fainting made us level up enough to evolve Heat Miser. Now he has sheer force, so his moves don't have secondary effects anymore, but they will be 30% stronger. This dude's gonna be a sweep machine, that's gonna power up Fire Punch a lot. It took a while, but eventually we found Pan Sage, who we catch and call the Grinch. Perfect, right? We aren't gonna want to evolve him until he's mid-level 30s when he learns some new moves, but at least it's something that can resist electric moves. It's got extra defense and less attack thanks to its nature, too. Less attack could be a problem, since we'll probably use Seed Bomb, but I think we'll mostly use Special Attack with him, you know, Grass Knot, so it might not be too bad. I'd like to get a new nature, but it took me almost an hour just to find this guy, and that's with Speed Up, so I'm sticking with him. Like, a real life hour. That's what the timer is in the top right. A real life hour. <laughs> The timer on the second screen is my system clock. It can't get sped up by turbo. That's how long it actually took. Once we get back to the electric gym, we totally mopped the floor with her team. Heat Miser has become a real beast, and he just landed one-shot knockouts on each one of her Pokémon. It's gonna be weird if the fire type is my lead Pokémon in the Christmas run, isn't it? Anyway, I tried to go west out of town to get our next Pokémon, but we ran into Team Plasma again. Actually, to be more accurate, our rival is calling them out, then gets overwhelmed and asked us to back him up. We one-shot them like they're nothing, then he tells us that five years ago his sister's purloin got stolen, and that's why he hates Pokemon thieves. Makes sense, but maybe give me some warning ahead of time next time you go charging a group of dangerous criminals? Now I need to head west, but before I do, I slapped Fly on Santa's Delibird and flew back to Castalia City to pick up the experience share. I'm probably going to use this on Grinch to help him catch up enough to be usable, since Santa's Delibird really isn't pulling his weight in combat anyway. I doubt he ever will. It's a Delibird. <laughs> I headed for the drawbridge, hoping to finally get to Route 6 to get my next Pokémon, but there's some mandatory battle with a biker here that I'm pretty sure is just a reason to give me a rotation battle tutorial. Hey, at least I have three Pokémon in a run for once. This fight was super easy, Heat Miser's a beast. On the bridge, we run into a member of the old Team Plasma getting bullied by a member of new Team Plasma into stealing Pokémon because it's fun. Like, he's trying to peer pressure the guy into stealing Pokémon. It's weird. Our rival, I mean I keep calling him our rival, but he's kind of like our weird eccentric friend? Okay, that's not fair, I'm the weird eccentric friend. <laughs> Gooset runs off the grunt, and the ex-Plasma guy explains that he's part of the good Team Plasma that's run by N, and the bad guys are the bad Team Plasma run by Getsis, and that we can follow him back to his house to learn more plot. I'm kind of interested, but I think I'll leave that lore dump for you guys when you play the game, because we got a Christmas run to continue. After dealing with that, it's time to catch our next Pokémon. 
I headed west to catch myself a deerling. I'm gonna name him Rudolph. Looks like we have less defense and more special attack. Not sure if that'll pay off since I seem to remember Deerling learning good physical moves, but we'll make it work. Although Heat Miser is a good level, the rest of our team are all pretty underleveled at the moment, so I took the chance to level them up a little bit, partly with experience share. Even if Heat Miser leads the team, I'm still gonna need good backup for when he can't solve the problem. Ground Gym time, first is Crocorock against Grinch. Our attack is down from Intimidate, but Seed Bomb still does about half his health and damage. Thanks to Torment though, we couldn't finish him off and got crunched down fast. Out to Rudolph who finished it with a jump kick. Is jump kick a drop kick and high jump kick a missile drop kick? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, Sand Slash is next and all we hit that mattered is Leech Seed before going down. Fun fact, almost every single time I say Leech Seed in a run, I accidentally say Leech Life first and have to go back and fix it. <laughs> He Miser took it out with a Fire Punch and the Leech Seed damage, but not before losing some health and speed. Last was Exadrill, who hit us really hard before going down to a critical Fire Punch in return. After leaving the gym, Clay takes us to the local battle arena to get entered into a three round tournament that we're forced to enter. The first round was against Gooset, who we swept with Heat Miser. The second round was against Charon, who we swept with Heat Miser. The third round was against Colrus, who we swept with Heat Miser. Awesome tournament, really sent the fans home happy. Could you imagine the Cruiserweight Classic and Davari just like swept every single match in three minutes? <laughs> anyway, after leaving, Gooset sees a Plasma Grunt and goes running. I could end half the route descriptions with that. So we follow him onto a boat. Instantly, we figure out it's Team Plasma's base and we get surrounded and have to do a series of single and double battles. Battles I did entirely with Heat Miser because my only other choice is to use Grass types against their Poison types or Santa's Delibird who can't fight anything that isn't weak to fly. As soon as we take them all down, a man from the previous game who's dressed like a warlock shows up, gets mad, and then makes ninjas teleport us to the dock. Then Gooset screams and goes running off somewhere and Sharon tells me to go to Route 6 to keep looking for Plasma. You know what? Route 6 sounds good. I need to make some progress. Just past the route is Charged Stone Cave, the place that leads us to the Flying Gym. This place is kinda cool to grind in because we have fighting and grass moves on Rudolph and Grinch, and there's some rock types here. I didn't really grind here for very long since it's not the fastest place in the world, but it's much better than grinding on the grass and flying types outside. Speaking of outside, it's winter so we go ahead and catch a cub chew. Abominable Snowman is a little bit long so I went with Yeti. It's got neutral stat gains and raises its evasion in hailstorms. It's nothing too crazy yet, but once it evolves it should get a decent ice move and that's only a few levels away. I'll grind it up a little bit right away, then get to the flying gym. First up is our Yeti against her Swoobab. Heart Stamp didn't do much to us, but our Icicle Crash one-shot her. Out to Heat Miser to Fire Punch Skarmory, but she hangs on with Sturdy. A Hyper Potion keeps her up longer, but in the end, all she hit was a surprisingly weak critical air cutter before we took her down. Back out to Yeti for Swana, and we just spammed Charm as she hit Feather Dance and a few Air Slashes to take us down. I tried switching into both grass types to see if either one could handle her air slash and use leech seed, but no luck. Finally, we sent in Heat Miser and our Fire Punch crit nearly taking her down. Her bubble beam brought us to red health, but our follow-up punch got the knockout, winning us a very close gym battle. After we leave the gym, Professor Juniper from the first game swings by and we all take a plane trip to some weird deserted town. Apparently, this is the only way to get to the next gym because the path through the mountain is closed? The route leads us through a different mountain instead, Reversal Mountain. They say it's a volcano, and maybe if I explored it more that would have been obvious, but for me it was just a couple of decent double battles with Bianca on my side. We just ran down a hall, fought some weird hikers that were waiting to ambush us, then I found the exit. I think I just guessed the shortest path through. We entered into a tiny beachside town, and the moment I wanted to leave, Gooset showed up out of nowhere and challenged us to a battle. Unpheasant is first, but all he did was taunt us as we one-shot him with Yeti. Next was Samurott, who tried to encore Grinch doing nothing. That was weird. Well, we hit some seed bombs for a bit of damage before going down. Heat Miser took an Aqua Jet as he landed a Hammer Arm, but he just healed with a potion right after. In the end, we went down, but not before lowering his speed with Hammer Arms. Yeti is still slower though, so we took some hits before we finished him off. Last was Simisage, their own Grinch. That's fine, Yeti type beats Grinch type, so we win. Classic Christmas rules. 
Row 13 is a bit of a rough route. Some of the Pokemon here are dealing pretty serious damage to us, and our team is really starting to fall behind again. I decided to spend a little bit of time here to get some more levels, since it's a lot faster to just get levels off the trainers rather than having to grind for them later. As we enter the new town, we get kidnapped by Bianca and Professor Juniper and forced to listen to an old woman's story, the horror! After our valiant escape, we bumped into Gooset again and some Team Plasma dudes just showed up, so we have a double battle against a Grunt and a Dark Magic user from the SNES Fire Emblem games. It was a pretty easy fight, we didn't even have full health going into it. After that is Route 12, a route so short that I cleared it in a few seconds while accidentally missing every trainer. Then there's this bridge with some guy who wants to hit a 1000 battle win streak, and he's only one win away. I say no to his challenge, and he actually tells me to go swim across the river. Are you kidding me? So I destroy this dork's win streak and keep riding. On Route 11, I was just riding along and had a legendary jump down from a cliff and challenge us. And I just kept riding, sorry, I already have a reindeer on the team. Hey, it's Dragon Gym time! Drudagon is first, and right away we lucked out, getting a flinch with Icicle Crash. He healed up, but we took him down before he could ever hit us. Flygon is next, and he's extra weak to ice, so naturally, he's a one-shot, but we really lucked out again with his super effective rock slide missing us. Last was Haxorus, and I was a bit worried he'd take us down, but we flinched him too! We just swept the Dragon Gym. I mean, I know it's a Christmas run and we have ice types, but I'm still happy. Why is it I have to sit through story time with Grandma and Grandpa, but neither story has anything to do with Christmas? So we go outside and see a sky ship start shooting giant chunks of ice at us. It really is a Christmas game! The Dark Mage from earlier showed up to steal stuff. Grandpa has a slide around town taking out grunts, ending with another fight with Team Plasma's Warlock. That was pretty easy thanks to all of his ice types. The Ninja right after was pretty easy too, but it looks like they stole what they wanted and got out of here, so it's back to hunting. We're told to go to the marine tunnel from that tiny beachside town from earlier, and man, you wouldn't think a town that small would have infrastructure like this. My god! On the other side is the last gym. It's a water gym, so I make sure to finally grab a leaf stone to evolve Grinch. He's still underleveled, but I'm trying to catch him up. Caracosta is first, and despite being double weak to grass, he actually survived a horn leech from Rudolph. He hit us, but he just healed with potions, so our horn leeches took him down and healed us back up. For Waylord, I switched to Grinch to go for Grass Knot, a move that does more damage to heavy Pokemon. He still held on with tons of health though, and one-shot us with Bounce. Rudolph was able to finish it with a horn leech. For Jellicent, we weren't doing amazing damage, but they hurt us, and we landed a crit early for the win. These grass types really did catch up right in time. After that is Route 22. As we ride through, we just bump into a legendary that's hanging out again, and Colrus just shows up. He gives us a device that apparently energizes Pokemon, then he walks away and suddenly drops a hint that we should go to the seaside cave on Route 21. Why do I get the feeling he's tricking me into doing something stupid right now? So, Route 21 is mostly just water and sand. It's cool getting to fight lots of water types here since we do want to level up our grass Pokemon, but the trainer Pokemon here are nearly level 50, so we do actually have a hard time in some of these fights. Not that I'm complaining too much, mind you, we do need the experience to keep pace. The cave itself is super short, but some dude is blocking the exit saying that we have to defeat his army of first form rock Pokemon. What is this guy, me? Anyway, we have loads of moves to deal with rock types, so it wasn't an issue. Turns out that didn't even lead us the right way though, so I had to keep exploring until I found the east exit. Okay, the thing Chorus gave me just made a Pokemon move out of the way. Maybe he isn't a bad guy. I don't know, he really looks like one in the battle sprite art. Why does this guy have a device though that just makes one type of Pokemon walk a little and then breaks? He's like Apple Kid from Earthbound. Just the worst inventor. Actually, no, that's that's not fair. Orange Kid was a worse inventor. Why am I doing Earthbound references? No one gets this anymore. I'm an old man. <laughs> anyway, we found Plasma's ship. After taking out some grunts on the deck alongside Gooset, we enter the ship itself. There's a big energy field that seems to need switches off, so by video game logic, that must be progress. 
As soon as we go below deck to turn off the switches, an ex-Plasma member disguised as a current Plasma member loudly announces that he's just in disguise. And then as soon as he finishes talking, I realize the handful of other Plasma members who were right there and heard this are real Plasma members. He did not think that through. So it's teleporter puzzle time. In Gens 1 and 3, I've already memorized all the teleporter puzzles that matter, but here, I didn't see this coming at all. I didn't want to look up the solution, and I need the levels anyway, so I just ran around clearing the place. It took a little while, but it wasn't too bad since you can heal it by sleeping in some of the beds. After the puzzle, we find the room where they get the energy for their ice cannon. They've actually got a captured ice-type legendary and are using it like a battery. We had a tag team match with the Dark Mage and his Grunt again, and they put up a decent fight, but mostly just thanks to being able to confuse us. Ice types are pretty fragile when Heat Miser is around. After winning the fight, they just have ninjas kidnap us and drop us back off at the beach. Really, they should do that more often. We're told to head off to the giant chasm in the far north, since that's where the legendary is from, so that's where we're going. To get to the chasm, we have to go through a short cave path. While we were there, we bumped into a swine, so I caught it. What's a swine? A mammoth? Are mammoths Christmassy? There must be a mammoth in a Christmas movie. There was a mammoth in Ice Age, right? Was that a Christmas movie, or was that just a movie with a lot of snow? What even was the mammoth's name in Ice Age? And I'm looking it up. It's Mammoth? Alright, our mammoth is named Mammoth. <laughs> Less attack and more speed, and that kinda sucks, but we're rolling with it, why not? Makes things harder for myself, but that's half the fun of the run. I'm just thrilled to finally have a good ground move on the team. As soon as we get to the crater, we see a big clash between the good and evil sides of Team Plasma. We race head towards their ship where Goose it is already. As we go down below deck, we find a big pipe puzzle where we have to beat grunts and ask them for passwords. It ended up being 2,202, and that took me way too long to figure out. For our troubles, we got to beat up the Dark Mage again. In fairness, he mostly uses ice types, I'm just in an old Fire Emblem mood. So we beat him up, go to the next room, and it's Chorus talking like an evil supervillain. I knew it! Do I get points for calling it, or was it too obvious? Alright, this is my third attempt at him because he's got two Pokemon with Sturdy, and it's awful. First is Magneton, and he has it, so we have to sacrifice Rudolph to do at least a little bit of damage first. Jump Kick is super effective, and that's cool, but we got paralyzed with Thunder Wave right away and went down fast. Thunder Wave is exactly why we couldn't have Heat Miser start the fight. Speaking of, he comes in and finishes him off because Magneton can't be saved by Sturdy now. Speaking of, out to Grinch, because it's Magnazone and he also has Sturdy. Same deal, we just deal a little bit of damage and tank Thunder Wave so that Heat Miser can swoop in and get the knockout as soon as Grinch goes down. Thanks to that strategy, we were able to keep Heat Miser healthy enough to take down the entire rest of his team super easy. With him defeated, we can finally manage to come face to face with Getsis, the final boss of the first game. He leaves pretty much right away and tells his ninjas to just take us out. Goose it shows up and asks for his cat. Did I bring up that he'd been looking for his sister's cat the whole game? I think I did. So the ninja has the cat, but talks about how it only obeys him since he owns the Pokeball, then they jump us. The ninjas are great at teleporting us around, but they need to really work on their actual Pokemon battling skills. Don't worry, he gets the cat back after the fight, everyone's happy. So we follow Getsis into the cave, and he unleashes his legendary on us. He straight up tries to end us with an ice attack, like to us as a trainer, but then N comes riding in on Zekrom at the last moment to save us. In a cave. I guess there's a hole in the cave. Somehow, Getsus takes control of the situation by using a gene splicer that he stole from the Dragon Gym to fuse both Pokemon together into some kind of super dragon that we have to fight. Unfortunately, we have to ride all the way back to the ship to find a doctor to heal at, because they forced us to do tons of fights in a row at this point, and I need to heal before I fight this dragon. Once I do the fight though, we just clobber it so hard with Hammer Arm that it goes down in one hit and somehow defuses. Getsus jumps us as soon as the fight is over, so it's boss time. Kofagrigus is first, and Heat Miser is still at the front of the party, so we ended up taking a hit from Shadow Ball. I'm just thankful his Toxic missed us, because that could have been really bad. Seisma Toad is a one-shot from Grinch, and Electros has moves that are super effective against most of our team, so I have to use Heat Miser to take him down. 
We almost went down to a thunderbolt in the process. Drapion is next, so I sent in Mammoth to earthquake our way to victory, taking a solid 100 damage in the process, but leveling up and learning Blizzard. For Toxicroak, I sent in Heat Miser, and although the Fire Punch was really strong, we fainted. Out to Mammoth, but we got outsped and one shot with Brick Break. This is looking rough. I have Rudolph go in there and jump kick him just to finish him off already. Hydragon came out, so I kept in Rudolph to Leech Seed just to end up going down to one Dragon Rush after we both missed on the first round. I sent in Grinch to keep trying with Leech Seed, but again, a one shot. Then I sent in Santa's Delibird, realizing that he's losing health every time he hits us due to his life orb, so I want him as hurt as possible before Yeti. As we both came down to our final Pokemon, though, we quickly got overpowered and went down. After an incredibly long run back, I decided to open the fight with Rudolph. Our faint attack isn't the strongest move in the world, but we crit right away for far more damage than I was expecting. He got us with Toxic and wasted a bunch of our time with Protect. We went down in the end, but at least we were able to finish him off with Heat Miser, so we never got him hurt. Seismitoad was still a one-shot with Grinch, and it's back out to Heat Miser for Electros. This time, instead of punching him twice, we finally used his belly drum we've had most of the game to drop our health, but max out our attack. He hit acrobatics for a lot of damage, but we one-shot him on the follow-up. Naturally, the Drapion right after went down in one fire punch, and as Hydreigon came out, we nailed a hammer arm to swat down the pseudo-legendary. Toxicroak put an end to our reign of terror, though, as his poison jab finished us off. Lastly, Mammoth came out and one-shot him with Earthquake to beat Getsus. Hey, how did his Pokémon go down in level since Black 1? With Getsus finally defeated, his ninjas take him away, and we instantly go back to focusing on the Pokémon League. Victory Road is just to the west, so it's time for the home stretch. Quickly, I realize that Victory Road is pretty brutal in this game, though. Most trainers are quite a few levels higher, and half the trainer battles end with us losing at least one Pokémon. Because of that, I had to start skipping trainers till I found a doctor, then started grinding. We haven't had a decent grinding spot in hours, and my team are desperately in need of levels. I think at this point I can safely make the assumption that there is absolutely no way I'd have gotten this recorded in one week without speedup. As it stands right now, this is my last day that I was planning to record this, and it's already going along, so I can't even imagine how behind I'd be if I didn't take so much extra time to work on this, plus using speedup. I remember the first ever run that I wanted to get done in one week, but that took so long that I had to give it an extra week, was the Gen 5 First Form Bug Challenge. This game is really cool, but man is it ever brutal to do challenge runs in. As we were near the end of Victory Road, Gooset showed up and challenged us to a battle. Unpheasant was a one-shot with Fire Punch, and his new Buffalant was almost a one-shot with Hammer Arm. I'm kind of impressed that he held on with that much of a level difference. His Earthquake hurt a lot, but we still got the knockout. We had Grinch land a Seed Bomb on Samurott, but he was still hurt from Victory Road, so he went down. Rudolph nearly finished it with Horn Leech, but nearly got one shot with Ice Beam, before winning on the counterattack. Last was his Grinch, and we landed a Fire Punch for the win. So here's our team going into the Elite Four. Heat Miser, Mammoth, and Yeti are all pretty good levels, both of our Grass types are kind of falling behind, and Santa's Deli Bird just sucks, but I kind of expected that. I don't really know what to expect from the Elite Four and Pokemon Champion, but I hope this is enough. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ghost Trainer Chantel. First for Kofagrigus, we have Heat Miser Fire Puncher down in a couple of hits. For Golurk, we have Grinch Seed Bomb. We still took quite a bit of damage from his counterattack, but the follow-up ended him. Chandelure is a fire type, so we send in Yeti to go for Surf. We totally lucked out as a Fire Blast missed us on the first round, but the second one crit us for an easy knockout. Probably didn't even need to crit. I sent in Rudolph to go for Faint Attack, just to get one shot by Fire Blast, so I had to send in Heat Miser. His only move that could hit was Fire Punch, so we landed a hit, she hit us in return to bring us to only 3 health, then we finished her off with another Fire Punch. Last was Drift Bloom, which looks like a typo, and Fire Punch nearly got the one shot, but we went down on the follow-up. I sent in Mammoth to spam Blizzard, and although she did heal with a full restore, Thankfully, we managed to hit two more blizzards for the win. Low accuracy move, that required a bit of luck. Second is Dark Trainer Grimsley. Lipart flinched us with Fake Out, but quickly went down from a hammer arm on the next round. Then we sent in Grinch to take down Crocodile. Wait, was it Crocodile or was it Croconaw? 
Uh, it's not in front of me right now. It's a mystery. Anyway, we tried to take him down with Grass Knot, but we ended up going down thanks to a crit, so we had to finish it with Yeti instead. As Crafty came out, we sent in Heat Miser to land a one-shot with Hammer Arm, and last was Bisharp, who went down in one Fire Punch. Third is Psychic Trainer Caitlyn. Masharna was first, and we nearly got a one-shot with a critical Icicle Crash, but she hung on and hit a Yawn. Then she healed up, so our next hit didn't take her down, and she started spamming Dream Eater as we were asleep. We took her down once we woke up, but we lost most of our health in the process. For Reuniclus, we hit a Fire Punch but lost two-thirds of our health to Psychic before we finished it. Gothitel also hung on from a Fire Punch and nearly took us out with Psychic, but we finished her off on the follow-up. Last is Sigilith, so we sent in Mammoth for Blizzard. We lost tons of health and some special defense to Psychic, did decent damage with Blizzard, then fainted due to the special defense draw. I sent in Yeti to try and finish it, but she was too slow and went down as well. Finally, Heat Miser went in and landed a Fire Punch for the win. Fourth is Fighting Trainer Marshall. Throw is first and we nail him with Grinch's Acrobatics. It's a good thing we have this move because his whole team but mine Shao has rock moves to destroy the entire rest of our non-grass team. He went down in a few hits and as mine Shao came out, we one-shot it with Fire Punch from Heat Miser. With the real threat down, we just took out the rest of his team easily with Grinch using Acrobatics. So it turns out the Pokemon Champion is Iris, the Dragon Gym Leader from White. Honestly, she probably already told me this, and I didn't notice, so it was an interesting surprise. A good one, though, since we have a lot of ice types. It's time for the Pokemon Champion fight. The pseudo-legendary Hydreigon is first, so right away we hammer fist it with Heat Miser to one-shot it. Eggron is second, and is also super weak to fighting, so another hammer fist gets us another one-shot. Solid start. For Haxorus, we went straight to Yeti. We took an Earthquake for a decent chunk of damage, but our Icicle Crash did much more. She healed and was faster than us, so she got another attack in, but she just used Dragon Dance instead of doing more damage, so we took her down. Dredagon was a one-shot with Icicle Crash, and Archaeops outsped us and hit a Rock Slide to finally make us faint. I sent in Mammoth, knowing Blizzard would do tons of damage, and I'm happy it did, because his acrobatics nearly took us out first. It only took one Blizzard, though. Lapras came out last, so I sent in Grinch and went for Grass Knot, knowing that Lapras is a really heavy Pokémon. It did tons of damage, but we went all the way down to red health from Ice Beam. We were faster though, so on the follow-up, we took her down, winning the battle. With that victory, we got into the Hall of Fame and won the run. This was my first time playing the game, so, uh, final verdict? I think it was really good. I'm gonna have to go back and explore some of the side content, since they kept trying to introduce things like tournaments and the film studio to me, but I never really had the chance to explore those parts of the game, what with the time limit. Even with me just beelining the story, I really like how the game was paced. The major plot of the game actually got set up right at the start and mattered the whole way through the game, so that's pretty cool to see in a Pokemon game. It was a long game, but it never felt like it was wasting my time. Platinum is awesome, but sometimes it feels like it was just wasting your time with needless back and forth travel. I really hope you guys like that run. No challenge video next week since I'm going to need a whole week just to do the voiceover and editing for this video. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. And all of this part is officially off script now. I'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit, uh, vlog style, I guess, because it's the end of the video and it's the big Christmas run, and I guess you sat through it for this long already. I'm an hour into doing this voiceover right now, like, <laughs> with flubs and everything. I'm sure the video will be shorter once I edit out me flubbing every other line. Um, but this was a really fun run to work on. It, it was frustrating at times, definitely, on day one and day five of recording, because those were the very long days, the start and the end. But overall, I liked the game, and I had a fun time, and it was really cool getting to do another big important feeling run. It kind of felt like when I did my first uh, run in any of the given Elder Scrolls games, where I just really took a lot of time and had fun with it. I had more time to work on these things back then, and I don't as much now. Uh, part of it is, I guess, getting older. I'm almost 30 now, and I have a lot of responsibility in my personal life and everything, and people to take care of. Um, but I'm still trucking away at this, and I can't believe that so many of you are still watching, and so many of you are sticking with it. 
I've heard the complaints. Some people have said that these are a little too template-y and that, you know, the, the one week time limit that I give myself means you guys get videos all the time, but it also means that they can be a bit short and a bit template-y. And I get it. Yeah, it, it's less fun to work on that long term as well. And it was definitely a lot of work. I've strongly been considering cutting down to just two challenges a month because I've been doing three a month for the last little while and that helped. And I think if I did two a month, that would help a lot more, both in having more time to work on the challenges so that they can be longer and more fun, but also giving me more time to do other stuff on my channel because I'm sure a lot of you know already, but I did daily videos for 10 years and not most of that was not Pokemon challenges. I'm primarily a streamer and a Let's Player because I love doing that too. That's, that's how I started. Yeah, I've always played Pokemon stuff on the channel because I've been a Pokemon fan since long before YouTube was around. Uh, but I like to do a variety of a lot of things. I'm not asking for you to watch any of those non-Pokemon things, mind you, because hey, if you're not into non-Pokemon stuff, whatever. I'm just happy that you're even here. But um, it's I want more time to work on those other things because I do miss it. And although it really doesn't pay the bills doing the other things, I don't care, when have I ever been motivated by that? You guys saw how much I shuffled on the channel that basically nobody watched and it hurt me in the algorithm, and I didn't care, I was still having fun doing the Let's Plays. So I'd really like to take a little bit more time back to do a little bit more of that, and have more fun with that, and to have fun having time to work on side projects again, which I never have time to anymore. When I started these Pokemon challenges, it was a fun side project I did, because I would do fun side projects every single year, just trying little side videos, new genres, and see if I had fun doing it. That's how this whole thing started, and how am I ever going to find the next genre that I really like doing on the side if I don't have any time to experiment with that, you know? Uh, so I'm considering it. It's not set in stone, but I'm considering it. I didn't really do anything for Thanksgiving this year, um, but I, I feel like Christmas is also kind of a time of reflection, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, it's that time of year, end of the year, when you're reflecting on what you're thankful for. And I'm sure you've heard me talk about this in vlogs and podcasts and Twitter and whatever, but I'm obviously very thankful that after working my whole adult life as a, a disabled dude who had a very hard time ever trying to find any kind of traditional work in a rough job market in an industrial part of uh, Canada where I couldn't work any manual labor jobs. Um, it's really incredible to me that I could take just something I've always been passionate about, video games and showing people video games and goofing around with my friends, and I've been able to finally, after all these years, make a decent living off of it. It's not amazing, but it's enough that I can take care of me and my family, and I'm incredibly thankful for that because, man, like, I always thought that I could do it eventually, and I guess eventually is right when describing how long it took me, but um, it was worth all of the effort. It was worth all, all, all of the effort, all of the long, long days working <laughs> 70 plus hour weeks. I didn't start taking days off until a year to a year and a half ago is when I started taking one day off a week. And it was this year that I started taking two days off a week like a normal person, you know? I'm very lucky that I can do that. And it's not as easy to do, obviously, because the money doesn't stay good forever. Welcome to YouTube. But it's enough that I think I'm okay. And that's pretty nuts to me. It's enough that I was able to go to my Patreon and turn it into just a tip jar. I could never keep up with that thing anyway, to be fair. I don't know what perks to give because I don't like to paywall stuff. I want the show to be free, so I just turned Patreon into a tip jar. Don't pledge anything on that, by the way, if you're hurting. <laughs> I bring it up in a way to say that I'm unbelievably thankful knowing that I don't need that money now considering the extra few hundred dollars I used to get on Patreon, like that helped us make rent for a very long time. I've lived a really long portion of my life below the poverty line. And it, even after years of finally making it big on YouTube, does that count? You know what I mean. After years of it, I feel like I'm, it's finally stable. The view count has fallen, like everybody expects it to eventually, 
but it's settled somewhere where I can actually afford for people to be okay in my life. And that's the part to me that I'm really thankful for because I wasn't, there was no, never any guarantee of anything, but there definitely wasn't a guarantee of that. Channels get really big sometimes and they can't keep the momentum going. A lot of people used to tell me that my channel was dead and it was never going anywhere and I'd never go anywhere and I never believed them. And <laughs> turns out I was right in the end. Awesome. I'm real lucky about that. But it was hard work, you know? If I did the Pokemon challenges that I did and they blew up like they did and I didn't have all of those almost a decade before it of pumping out video after video after video and developing my work ethic, there is no way I could have kept the momentum going with all of these challenges. I think I've outlasted everyone. Not bragging, just talking about how I work, you know? No one has to do this genre of video if they're not having fun with it. I just have uh, an iron will. I like to say that I'm quite relentless and I'm proud of that because um, it's the work ethic that it takes to, to rise up when you started from a very low starting point like I did, you know? I'm just very proud of myself and I've heard a lot of you guys say that you're proud of me too. And that's, that's awesome. It means a lot to me. Um, I don't want to get too personal now because it's not a vlog. You guys can see me get personal on the vlogs and the streams and stuff. You know where it is, Twitch TV, all that. All that stuff's on my channel. Check out the playlist section, all kinds of stuff. Have fun. Um, I don't want to ramble anymore, though, because you've got better stuff to do today. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching, and until next time, Merry Christmas.